for some of the biggest stories in the markets, we welcome in Caroline Woods, Senior Markets Correspondent here on Schwab Network. And I was saying earlier when we talk about the Cybertruck, but I was thinking about when you buy an IPO, there's the lockup period that you can't sell the IPO, and now it's sort of going into the Cybertruck. Um, <laughs> so tell us some developments on Tesla. Well, there's quite a few headlines around Tesla, or around Tesla today. Let's start with the Cybertruck. Just noting Tesla share is up about 4% regardless of all of these headlines. Um, but the, the Cybertruck launch is fast approaching. It feels like we've been waiting forever for the Cybertruck to actually be here. November 30th is the day. And there's this new policy that's raising some eyebrows. Essentially, you can't flip your Cybertruck. You know all those people that go and buy Taylor Swift tickets and then sell them for quadruple? Well, you won't be doing that with the Cybertruck because Tesla's actually prohibiting customers from selling or attempting to sell Cybertrucks within the first year following the delivery date. The user actually has to notify Tesla in writing <coughs> and give Tesla reasonable time to purchase the vehicle at the listed price on the final price sheet minus 25 cents per mile driven and then reasonable wear and tear and the cost to repair the vehicle. If Tesla does not purchase the vehicle, then the user can resell the vehicle to a third party only after getting written consent from Tesla. But sellers beware, Tesla warned that it could seek legal recourse if the user breaches this provision and the damages could be the tune of $50,000 or the value received as consideration for the sale or transfer, whichever is greater. And uh, Tesla may also refuse the, the uh, seller's ability to actually sell. They might just downright say, no, you can't. So that is one piece of news surrounding Tesla. Also, the supercharger network is expanding. There's a, a new deal with EG Group, which is a, a gas station group, a convenience store operator. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the agreement allows EG Group to purchase Tesla supercharger hardware that'll be deployed under the EG brand. It's uh, really the second major deal in just a few weeks because there was the deal also with BP that, uh, you know, a hundred million dollar deal uh, worth of supercharger hardware for deployment at BP gas stations uh, under the BP brand. So the supercharger network continues to expand. Could be giving a, sh a boost to shares today. And then there are also reports that India is considering slashing tariffs on imported EVs as Tesla explores setting up uh, a plant in the country. Bloomberg is reporting that the Indian government is working on tax cuts for imports of completely built EVs for up to five years. It's also devising a plan to provide concessions on duties for global auto manufacturers to import battery powered vehicles if they eventually agree on building them in India. So Financial Times is reporting that the Tesla government uh, at, the tes that Tesla asked the Indian government for initial tariff cuts that may reduce customs duties by 70 percent for cars under 40,000 and 100 percent for vehicles over 40,000. So we'll see how that plays out. It's just just reports right now, but a lot of headlines can always count on Elon Musk and Tesla to make the headlines today, no exception. Yeah, and a 4% move to your point, a lot of headlines. That wasn't one story. I mean, there were many stories in there. Um, and all really interesting, and they were all, in this case, mostly beneficial yes. to Tesla. Um, that being said, we'll turn our attention to story number two, and this is the UAW. And you thought maybe it was done, folks, maybe not so fast. Yes, we're taking a look at Ford and GM shares today. They are mixed. GM, modestly higher, Ford down by a little less than 1%. But the agreements between the UAW and the big three automakers that, of course, ended that, what, six-week-long strike may not actually be a done deal. Ford workers at the Louisville Assembly and Kentucky truck plants voted against the proposed contract late on Sunday. The UAW there, the local UAW unit, said 55% of production workers voted against the deal, while 69% of skilled trade workers voted for the new contract. Uh, we learned that in a post on Facebook. Mm. And then UAW workers at GM's Flint, Michigan plant voted to reject the tentative contract agreement as well. That happened at the end of last week. 53% of production workers voted against the deal, and then 65% of skilled trades workers were in favor of the deal, but overall 52% voted against the proposal. So the majority, of course, of workers need to approve the deal for them to actually be ratified. So the UAW will ultimately re reveal all of the results, but we're getting some results from some of the local unions. So it doesn't seem to be having a huge impact on shares today but definitely something to keep an eye on because just when we thought maybe strike season was wrapping up, yeah. might not be the case for the big three.
Yeah, I, I don't know that people really expected this today. I mean, I was a little surprised when I saw it. Um, but I knew that that was a risk that that could happen. Good to see you, Caroline Woods. Thank you always so much.